So I was reading this essay by Gregory Bateson called The Model in this book, Angel's Fear Towards an Epistemology of the Sacred by Gregory and Mary Catherine Bateson. And um, this essay concludes with a paragraph that I'm going to read to you. I think that that paragraph has something insightful to say about meditation practice and the kind of looping, self-correction, self-focusing, looping, self-focusing that we are taught to do in a standard meditation practice. So I'm going to read you this paragraph. Be that as it may, this dilemma, whether to treat the learning as a change in calibration or a problem in self-correction from moment to moment, this seems to be present in all arts. So the, the bulk of the essay was about this dichotomy that he drew between calibration and self-correction. So he used the example of two kinds of shooters. There was the the sharpshooter who has a sight on his gun, and of course it's a male sharpshooter, right? He has sights on his gun and and looks down the sight and makes a very, very small adjustment to the angle of the barrel and then looks down the side again. So it's getting all this real-time feedback, self-correction, to make sure that he hits his mark exactly. And he can learn to do this and do this very well. And then he talked about another kind of gunman, a rifleman who's hunting a bird. And the bird is flying. It's a moving target. It's going to come out of the bush at any moment. You don't know which. And the rifleman has to lift his weapon and shoot in half a second. There's no time for self-correction. Yet still, somehow the bird hunter, like the sharpshooter, can get better at this. And after lots of practice, the bird hunter is calibrated. There's no self-correction, because how can you self-correct in half a second? But nonetheless, the bird hunter is calibrated to hit his target without having to think about it. So, what, what does that distinction mean? Well, let's see what he says. Be that as it may, this dilemma, whether to treat the learning as a change in calibration or as a problem in self-correction from moment to moment, this seems to be present in all arts. So he's saying in order to get good at an art, we have to learn to distinguish what kind of learning we're doing, whether we are self-correcting or calibrating our skill. So this is, this is the connection that I want to make with meditation, is as you're practicing meditation, are you self-correcting or are you calibrating? Is it the first virtue of art to present this problem? To force the player and the listener, the painter and the viewer and so on, to surrender to that necessity which marks the boundary between conscious self-correction and unconscious obedience to inner calibration? Perhaps, too, this kind of shift of logical types will be seen to resemble some of the kinds of experience we label religious. For me, in learning to play the violin, those were regions where I feared to tread. Are there, then, regions that angels inhabit but fools fear to enter? I'm going to read that one more time. It's very dense. But um, he 
he's talking about different learning styles or potentially there are different hierarchically nested orders of learning self-correction turns into calibration maybe he's talking about two learning styles and what he says towards the end is that the shift between these two learning styles may resemble some kinds of experience that we label as religious. That's really what I want to focus on. Be that as it may, this dilemma, whether to treat the learning as a change in calibration or as a problem in self-correction from moment to moment, this dilemma seems to be present in all arts. Is it the first virtue of art to present this problem? To force the player and the listener, the painter and the viewer and so on, to surrender to that necessity which marks the boundary between conscious self-correction and unconscious obedience to inner calibration? Perhaps, too, this kind of shift of logical types will be seen to resemble some of the kinds of experience we label religious. For me, in learning to play the violin, those were regions where I feared to tread. Are there, then, regions that angels inhabit, but fools fear to enter? So, the question before us is, what what about this experience of shifting from one logical type to another, from one form of learning to another, or from one form of behavior to another meta-behavior, can be compared to the religious experience. How are they similar? Well, let's talk about the basic meditation instruction, right? So they say, Sit still. Focus on some point between your eyes or your thumbs or the center of your chest. Focus on your breath. Focus on some point. And then watch as your mind wanders. You're going to get distracted. You're going to go down some train of thought beautiful train of thought and the practice is noticing that you have gone down that beautiful train of thought setting an intention to say oh that's not where I want to be right now actually and then coming back to the breath so this is the skill that we practice returning after distraction, looping back, focusing, looping back, focusing. And we'll do this 10,000 times. The mind will always wander again. And uh, we can try to be really focused for our brows. I'm going to concentrate. I'm going to concentrate. Right? And, uh, Maybe if we do that, we'll hold our concentration for a little bit longer, potentially. All right, so that's like the self-correction of the sharpshooter. Very conscious, deliberate. Return, return, return. Make sure you do it right. But it takes a lot of energy, right? And the sharpshooter has to, you know, it takes him minutes to line up a single shot and fire. Can't do that over and over and over again and it will exhaust you. So then there's this other method which is not, oh I need to focus on the breath really hard, I'm going to stay here, I'm going to stay here. It's, it's much looser and you let your mind wander and then as soon as you notice you bring it back. You don't try to hold it anywhere. Let your mind wander again, and as soon as you notice, you bring it back. If you do that, 
thousand times, a million times. Eventually, you'll get calibrated. You no longer have to consciously make the effort to return. You'll just do it automatically. And once that pattern is built, once that calibration is established, all this mental space opens up. And I think it's that opening of space. That is what I think the religious experience is. So we practice this art of returning, focus, looping back, focus. Sometimes I'll notice my mind wandering and I'll hear some voice, are you having fun? <laughs> and then my excited thoughts will be like, yes, we're having lots of fun. And then the voice will go, okay, I'm glad you're having fun. Now let's return. And then I return. away again and I notice and the voice says, oh, are you still having fun, are you? Yes, I'm still having lots of fun. Okay, good. I'm glad you're having fun. Now let's return. And if we do this, repeat this pattern over and over and over and over. Maybe one day we'll understand what the infinite is. Maybe. <laughs>